Wake up. Wake up. Wake up, brothers and sisters. Something's happened. Something isn't right. Something's changed. Wake up, everybody. This is serious. The king. The king has had a dream. Everybody wake up. The king has had a dream, and we need to figure out what this means. The king has had a dream, and if we don't figure out what it means, it could be the death of us all. They come to me saying, oh, oh Brother Selim, do you know how to interpret dreams? Do you know anything about dreams? I say, listen, you know, you're watching, listening to the hot conflict dot com video series and you know I really don't know much about anything but maybe I, maybe I could help tell me what the dream is and maybe I could figure something out what do you mean the king won't tell us what the dream is You want me to give you the interpretation of a dream, but you're not going to tell me what the dream was? I mean, I, I might be able to help. I know a few little things, but you're going to have to tell me the dream first so that I can give you the interpretation. That's how this goes. The king won't tell us what the dream is? and sisters. I remember this. I remember this. My name's Selim, and I'm not the guy you're looking for. You need someone named... You need someone named Daniel. You see, many people claim to have an understanding of what's going on in the higher realms, what we call the astral realms, what we call the dream world. I am a follower of the Prophet Muhammad. We are those who believe that there is only one God, one creator, a creator of all that is, a creator of you and me, and all of the realms of the heavens above and all of the realms of the earths within and all of the multitude of worlds that exist throughout the known universe and beyond. He has created angels of beautiful light and various other creatures that we call jinns with free will, and he has created man. I? I'm a human being just like you, just like everybody else, born and raised on this planet Earth. I believe that there have been many messengers from our father Adam to Noah to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Joseph, Jacob, Solomon, Moses, David, Jesus, the Christ and Messiah. And I am a follower of the prophet Muhammad, the final messenger. And we believe that there is a day of judgment and there is an afterlife. There is something beyond this world. This life is not all that there is. There is something more. And we believe that there is a destiny and fate and that your Lord Most High really is the planner of all things. Daniel? Daniel is there at the time of Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon, right? And Daniel interprets the dream. Well, are we talking about... What subject are we talking about, brothers and sisters? Well, you know, we talk about weird, wild stuff, and this, as always, is the strangest story you've ever heard. And today our subject is lions. And, of course, Daniel faces the lions. 
They ask me, do I know anything about the dream world? Let me ask you a question. Is your name Daniel? Daniel? Are you a Daniel? Do you have dreams with lions? My name's Salim Siddiqui. I'm your brother. And if you haven't figured it out yet, I'm looking for you. Brother Daniel, the games are about to begin. But you see, I don't really know anything myself. It's the early 90s. And I, I've just gotten married. I'm back in the States. I've been in Mecca. I've come back. My dad's been telling me, you know, son, oh, it's time to settle down, get married. And I think, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get married. And I pick the perfect sister for me. And everything goes by the will of Allah, smoothly. And we get married, and something happens after you get married. They say that marriage is so important in spiritual work that it's important that you, as a matter of faith, find your mate, your love, create that bond and perform the ritual of marriage. A man and a woman, the divine masculine and the divine feminine, merging together. And there's something really beautiful about that because... Once you get married, the trials and the tribulations and the worries about the world that you keep thinking about, which when you're single is, am I even going to be able to get married? Those things change because now you're married and your perspective all of a sudden changes. And you start to see things differently and you start to think, well, what am I planning? What am I going to do for the future? What is this really about? You see, I'd spent a year, a year and a half in, in Saudi Arabia and I'd been studying and now I'd come back to the States, Houston, Texas, I got married, and I couldn't get the visas done for my wife in time. And so I had to make a decision. Do I leave my wife back in the States and take off and go back to the kingdom, back to the Kaaba, back to the holy city, back to the mother of cities that I had so longed to be in, and leave my new bride behind? That was a crazy decision. You see, the problem was, I'd been one of those people who had been searching for things and searching for things and going all over the world. And now I finally decided I'm going to commit, get married. Maybe my dad's advice is, is sound, you know? Maybe it is time to get married. And I found the right sister and she agreed and her family agreed and everything went well. And I just couldn't get the visas done. And I had a choice. Go back myself and be there at the next semester or lose my scholarship. Well, brothers and sisters, you know how it is. Pick Mecca or the old ball and chain. <laughs> right? Well, it's a little bit harder to say because I just got married. I'm a new newlywed, right? Who wants to leave their pride? But my wife for Mecca? Ooh, that's a kind of rough choice. And I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, I've already lived in Mecca for a year and a half. Uh, I'll let it go. Right? If it's meant to be, I really want my wife to go. I'd done her paperwork. I'd submitted it uh, before I left. I knew we were getting married. I did everything I could. I put her paperwork in, but there was no way the visas were going to come. It took me almost two or three years to get mine. I'm going to lose my position, and I'm not going back on my scheduled flight, and I'm not making it for the next semester. I'm losing my scholarship to the kingdom, and I'm not going back to Mecca. Ah, that's painful. That hurts a little. Ah, well, brothers and sisters, it's now the late 2000s, 2011, and I tell you, I still feel a little bit of that pain right now, so it hurts a little. <laughs> ah, brothers and sisters, but story goes on, and I'm figuring out things for myself, and I'm thinking, you know, I've been all over the world and I've been trying to find the, the answer. And I keep thinking, you know, the prophet Muhammad always said, when you're looking for the true struggle and you're looking for the battlefield, do you have a mother and father to serve? Well, that is always the best service. And if you read the, the writings of the Messiah, Jesus 
They would tell you to honor your mother and father. And of course, from the Ten Commandments, honor thy mother and father. And I keep thinking to myself that everywhere I went, I went from one struggle to the next, one front line to the next, one country to the next, studying from place to place. And I kept thinking to myself, what if I actually went home and tried to take care of my dad? And in the back of my mind, I kept thinking of those three guys. Oh, brothers and sisters, you know me. I tell stories, so let's tell a story. You know those three guys. There's those three guys in the story. They're out one day and they're walking and they get caught in a storm and it gets really bad. And they find a cave and they decide to go into the cave to shelter themselves from the rain. And as the storm gets worse, a boulder falls over them, over the cave. And those three guys are there stuck in the cave with no way to escape in the total pitch black darkness. And they keep thinking to themselves, how do we get out of this one? <laughs> we look like it's over, brothers. There are three brothers stuck in there and they're like, this is it. There's no way out of this. This is inescapable. One of them finally has a crazy thought. He says, listen, brothers, I got an idea. This might just work. It's a total leap of faith. We pray from our heart of hearts with our purest, purest souls, something that we did for the sake of the Lord Most High, not for ourselves, something purely for the sake of the Lord. And you know this story, brothers and sisters. And there's that guy, that first guy who says, I had an elderly mother and father. And I used to go out and take care of the, the flock and the sheep and milk the animals and do all the daily chores and I would come back home with the fresh milk and I would serve my parents first before my kids or anyone else and that they were treated with the honor and respect that is deserving them. I keep thinking of that guy, you know, I'm, I'm wondering about my dad and thinking about all the different places I've been and I keep searching the whole world as a confused person trying to find the truth and I'm wondering what I'm looking for and I'm thinking to myself, maybe I should be a better son to my father. I mean, my dad's actually a pretty decent father. Something happened to that guy that day. For some reason on that day, something happened. Something strange. And for whatever reason, he got delayed. And for some weird occurrence, he decided that that day, no matter what was going to happen, when he got home, he was not going to let anybody have the milk that he got before his parents. And he waited all night by their bed till they woke up because when he got home they were already asleep. His kids were crying. His family was hungry. But he was determined there was a reason why something happened that day to that brother. I want to know what happened to that guy. I wonder, I keep wondering about that guy and I think about my dad and I'm wondering what kind of service do I do for my father? I mean, I don't got flax. I don't, you know, if my mom needs milk, I go to the grocery store and get the milk. It's not really that big of a deal. But what is the thing that I'm supposed to do for my parents? How do I take care of my parents? And I keep thinking, what happened to that brother that day? Oh, you know, this is the beginning of the story. So brothers and sisters, sometimes you forget. So let me remind you. One of these days... I'm going to decide to go out and find that brother, brothers and sisters, because I want to know the rest of that story. I want to know what happened to him. I want to know what led up to that moment. I want to know why he decided to do that. My name's Salim, and oh, brothers and sisters, I'm going to go find that brother of ours, and I want to hear that story firsthand. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Is that a journey you're ready to take?